karmic retributions of beings in Jambudvipa, Chapter 4. At that time, Earth Star Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, because I receive the awesome spiritual strength of the Buddha, first come one. I am able to divide my body and rescue beings who are undergoing karmic retributions everywhere in millions of worlds. If it were not for the great compassionate strength of the first come one, I would be unable to manifest such changes and transformations. Now the world honored one has entrusted me with rescuing and liberating beings in the six paths until Agita becomes a Buddha. I accept the entrustment, world honored one, please have no further concern. Then the Buddha told Earth Star Bodhisattva, Beings who have not yet obtained liberation have unfixed natures and consciousnesses. Their bad habits bring bad karma. Their good habits bring rewards. Reacting to situations by committing good or evil deeds causes them to turn in the five paths without a moment's rest. Throughout aeons as numerous as dust most, they remain confused, deluded, obstructed, and afflicted by difficulties. They are like fish swimming through waters laced with nets. They may sleep through and keep their freedom temporarily, but sooner or later they will be caught. I am concerned about such beings, but since you keep making extensive vows, repeatedly throughout the successive aeons to take such offenders across what further worries need I have. After that was said, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva in the assembly named Samadhi Self Mastery King said to the Buddha, World Honored One, what vows has the Earth Star Bodhisattva made during so many successive aeons that now cause him to receive the world honored one's special praise? I, we hope the world honored one will tell us about this. Then the world honored one replied to Samadhi's self mastery king Listen attentively, listen attentively, and reflect well on the examples uh, I am about to give you. One time, limitless Asamkiyas of Nayutas of inexpressible aeons ago, a Buddha named All Knowledge accomplished thus come one, one worthy of offerings, one of proper and pervasive knowledge, one perfect in clarity and conduct well gone one, unsurpassed knight who understands the world, taming and subduing hero, teacher of gods and pupil. Buddha, World Honored One, appeared in the world. That Buddha's lifespan was 60,000 years. Before he became a monk, he was the king of a small country and was friendly with the king of a neighboring country. Both kings practiced the ten wholesome deeds and benefited beings. Because the citizens of those two neighboring countries did many bad things. The two kings made a plan using far-reaching expedients. One king vowed to quickly become a Buddha and then rescue absolutely all the other beings. The other king vowed, I do not want to become a Buddha until I first rescue all those who are suffering for their offenses, enabling them to find peace and finally to reach Bodhi. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Samadhi Self Mastery King. The king who vowed to quickly become a Buddha is all knowledge accomplished thus come one. The king who vowed to keep saving beings who are suffering for their offenses rather than become a Buddha is an earth star Bodhisattva. Another time, limitless as Sankhya ends ago, a Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes thus come one appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 ends, and his Dharma image age and a heart 
who had to accumulated blessings from rescuing beings, met a woman named Bright Eyes, who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? asked the Ahat. Bright Eyes replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now. Sympathizing with her, the Ahat entered Samadhi to contemplate and saw that Bright Eyes mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The Ahat asked, Bright Eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create while alive that makes her now have to undergo such terrible suffering in a bad destiny? Bright Eyes replied, my mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and other sea creatures. She especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Oh, Venerable One, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. The heart took pity on bright eyes and used his skillful means. He urged the bright eyes first. With sincere resolve, be mindful of pure lotus eyes first come one, and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. Bright eyes heard that, quickly renounced everything she loved, and swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha. Then she made offerings before them. The reverence she felt moved her to tears, and she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, emitting great light. He said to bright eyes, Your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Shortly thereafter, a maid servant in the house bore a son who spoke before he was three days old. Lowering his head and weeping, he said to bright eyes, the karmic conditions we create during our lives and deaths result in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. I am your mother and have been in darkness for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Thirteen years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? When Bright Eyes heard those words, she knew without a doubt that they were her mother's. Choked her with sobs, she said to the servant's child, Since you were my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil paths? The maidservant's son answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma, killing and slandering. Had I not received the blessings you earned to rescue me from difficulty, I would not yet be released from that karma. Bright Eyes asked, What happens in the house when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? The maidservant's son answered, I can't bear to speak of the ways in which beings suffer for their offenses. Even if I were to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about. When Bright Eyes heard that, he wept bitterly and spoke into the air, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. At the end of these thirteen years, 
she will be done with her heavy offenses and will not go back to the evil paths. O oh, Buddhas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths, is never again born into low stations, and will never again be female, then here before the image of pure lotus eyes thus come one, I vow that from this day on, throughout millions of billions of ends, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the hells or the three evil paths of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies of the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddhas will I myself achieve proper enlightenment. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come and say to her, Bright eyes, your own great compassion and sympathy will reach your mother through he, this mighty vow that you're making. My contemplation shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be done with this retribution and will be born as a Brahman with a lifespan of 100 years. After that retribution, she will be born in the lands of no concern with a lifespan of uncountable ends. Later, she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and save pupil and gods as numerous as sand grains in the Ganges. Shakyamuni Buddha told Samadhi Self Mastery King, The Arhat whose blessings have bright eyes, then is now inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva. The mother of bright eyes is now liberation Bodhisattva. Bright Eyes herself is now Earth Star Bodhisattva. He has been extending his compassion and sympathy like that from distant ends onward by making vows as many as Ganges sends to rescue vast numbers of beings. Men and women in the future may fail to do good deeds and only do evil, may not believe in cause and effect, may indulge in sexual misconduct and false speech, may use a divisive and harsh speech, and may slander the great vehicle. Beings with karma like that should certainly fall into bad destinies. But if they encounter good and wiser advisors who exhort them and lead them to quickly take refuge with Earth Star Bodhisattva, then those beings will just as quickly be released from their retributions in the three evil paths. If those beings are determined and respectful, if they behold, bow to, and praise the Bodhisattva, and if they make offerings of flowers, incense, clothing, jewels, food, and drink to him, they will enjoy supremely wonderful bliss in the heavens for millions of billions of ends. When their blessings in the heavens end, and they are born as pupils, throughout hundreds of thousands of ends, they will have the potential to be national leaders, able to remember all aspects of causes and effects from previous lives. Oh, Samadhi Self Mastery King, Earth Star Bodhisattva has such inconceivably great awesome spiritual power that he uses expansively for the benefit of beings. All of you Bodhisattvas should remember this sutra and proclaim and spread it far and wide. Samadhi Self Mastery King Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, World Honored One, please do not be concerned. We thousands of billions of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, based on the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength, will certainly proclaim this sutra widely throughout Jambu Vipa for the benefit of beings. Having spoken thus to the World Honored One, Samadhi Self Mastery King Bodhisattva put his palms together, respectfully bowed and withdrew. 
At that time, the four heavenly kings arose from their seats, put their palms together respectfully, and said to the Buddha, World honored one, Earth's Lord Bodhisattva has been making such great vows from distant ends past until now. Why is it that even now he has not yet finished taking beings across? Why does he continue to renew his vast and mighty vows? These world honored one explain that for us. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, Excellent, excellent. Now, to benefit you and to extend that benefit to people and gods of the present and future, I will speak about how Earth Star Bodhisattva, out of compassion and pity, uses expedient devices within the paths of birth and death in Jambu Vipa in the Saha world to rescue, take across, and liberate beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses. The four heavenly kings replied, Please, word on one. We would like to hear about this his work. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, From distant ends passed up to the present, Earth Star Bodhisattva has been rescuing and liberating beings. Since his vows are still not fulfilled, he continues with compassion and sympathy to help beings suffering for their offenses in this world. Moreover, he sees the ceaseless tangle of their causes extending on through infinite future ends. Because of that, he renews his vows. Thus, in this Saha world on the continent of Jambu Vipal, this Bodhisattva teaches and transforms beings by means of millions of billions of expedient devices. Oh, for heavenly kings, to kill us, Earth Star Bodhisattva says that short lifespans will be the retribution. To rob us, he says that poverty and acute suffering will be the retribution. To those who indulge in improper sex, he says that rebirth as pigeons or as mandarin drakes or ducks will be the retribution. To those who use harsh speech, he says that quarreling families will be the retribution. To those who slander, he says that being tongueless and having cankerous mouths will be the retribution. To the hateful, he says that being ugly and crippled will be the retribution. To the stingy, he says that not getting what they seek will be the retribution. So gluttons, he says that hunger, thirst, and sicknesses of the throat will be the retribution. To hunters, he says that a frightening insanity that destroys one's life will be the retribution. To those who oppose their parents, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. To arsonists who burn mountains and forests, he says that trying to take their own lives in the confusion of insanity will be the retribution. So cruel parents or step parents, he says that being flogged in future lives will be the retribution. So those who net and trap young animals, he says that being separated from one's own children will be the retribution. To those who slander the triple jewel, he says that being blind, deaf, or mute will be the retribution. To those who slight the Dharma and regard the teachings with arrogance, he says that remaining in the bad paths forever will be the retribution. To those who destroy or misuse possessions, of the eternally dwelling, he says that revolving in the house of four hundreds of millions of ants will be the retribution. So those who define the pure conduct of others and bear false witness against members of the Sangha, he says that remaining in the animal realm forever will be the retribution. So those who scorned, burn, behead, men or otherwise harm beings. 
He says that undergoing the very same suffering will be the retribution. So those who violate precepts and the regulations of pure eating, he says that being born as birds or beasts that must suffer from hunger and thirst will be the retribution. So those who make unprincipled and destructive use of things, he says that being unable to ever obtain what they seek will be the retribution. So the arrogant and haughty, he says that being servile and of low station will be the retribution. So those who is backbiting to cause discord among others, he says that being tongueless or having speech impediments will be the retribution. So those with daring views, he says that being reborn in backward regions will be the retribution. The bad habits involving body, mouth, and mind karma that beings of Jambu Vipa perpetuate result in hundreds of thousands of retributions like those. I have only listed a few examples here. Since the varying karma created by beings of Jambu Vipa brings about different responses, a store bodhisattva uses hundreds of thousands of expedient means to teach and transform beings. Those beings must first undergo retribution such as those and then fall into the house, where they pass through and so without being able to escape. You should therefore protect people and nations. Do not allow the accumulation of karma to confuse beings. Upon hearing that, the four heavenly kings wept in sorrow, placed their palms together, and withdrew. And a part one of Sutra of the Past Vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva. Om ha ha ha, 